Hi, this is Pastor Bob. If you were with us yesterday, you know that Mike Failauer came to speak, and he's talking about the revival that broke out in his church in 2018, affecting the community, the colleges, the high schools in the city of Corpus Christi. I want you to be blessed today as we go and find out the secrets of revival. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and study the Word of God with Bob Yandian. Hello, this is Pastor Bob Yandy, and welcome again to Student of the Word. And this is really part two, a continuation of what we began yesterday with Mike Failauer. We have been friends for years in the ministry. We've had great times together. Uh, we've had great times of, of just, again, ministering together. And, and actually from both of us, we started at small areas and God has just developed our ministry. He's the pastor of New Life Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. We began yesterday. If you weren't uh, watching yesterday, go back to YouTube. YouTube, those are, you can find those archived right there or even on our website. But com coming back to it is that five years ago, a revival broke out in Corpus Christi, which began in his church, but spread over to the college campus and has made uh, Charisma Magazine three times. And uh, with all the things we're seeing happen today, it's happening so quick that you may not even have heard what was going on down there because it was it was isolated to his church. A couple of the churches in the country it was happening too, but now we're seeing it start to spread. And uh, I just believe we're on the verge of the greatest revival the world has ever seen and uh, leading up to the coming of Jesus Christ. So uh, he talked to us yesterday about the revival. And again, as I mentioned, if you're ever near Corpus Christi, Texas on a Sunday, come to New Life Church, you'll be tremendously blessed. Great praise and worship and a great atmosphere of the presence of God as well as the preaching of the Word of God. So again, you'll be blessed. Mike, yes. great to have you back. It's great to be back, Pastor and, uh, Bob. Yesterday we talked about the revival, kind of how it started, how it spread, mm -hmm. the change in the students, the numbers of salvations, water baptisms. Yeah. How about getting into it? Let's talk a little bit about the miracles that have happened. Well, at yeah, uh, it's starting off um, again, um, there, there have been so many. There was a, a gentleman back in 2018 that had, um, uh, uh, I think it was liver cancer, and he only had uh, his doctor. He's sitting in the doctor's office. They went through this whole thing, and the doctor said, you've got liver cancer at stage four, mm -hmm. and you've got about six months to live. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're going to do, you need to do it. And that was it, and then he walked out. And while he, the guy's sitting there trying to wrap his head around what he just heard, he gets a text from a lady from the church that they used to work together in the same company, but they they don't work together anymore. She just, the Lord dropped him in her heart. She texted him. She said, I know this is random. I know we haven't talked for quite a while, mm -hmm. but there's uh, a, a, an outpouring that's happened at my church mm -hmm. and we're meeting this Wednesday or tonight. Mm -hmm. and I want to encourage you to come. She had no idea what he had just, the diagnosis he had just gotten. Mm -hmm. He went, went forward uh, during the altar call and was just praying and people gathered around him, not knowing what was going on, but they just laid hands on him and prayed for him and and uh, just generally praying for him. And he just knew that he was touched. Well, he was, the Lord had touched him. And um, and so he uh, had a doctor's appointment, I think the following week to do like this exploratory thing. Mm -hmm. They went in, they were there for, I don't know how long, it was over an hour, maybe longer. He comes out and the nurses are standing there and they're just smiling at him. And they basically said, you need to talk to the doctor. The doctor comes in. He says, I don't know how to explain this. I don't know what happened. But that cancer is gone. There's no. <laughs> so, I mean, that was just miraculous. Yes. We had a young lady who wore glasses and hearing aids. And the Lord healed her. That was five years ago. To this day, she still doesn't wear glasses or hearing aids. Last year, we had a little baby that fell and had a blood pooled on the brain. The baby was in the hospital. Couldn't gain weight. The doctors were thinking they're going to have to perform surgery on the brain. Mm -hmm. And uh, the parents don't attend the church, but the, a friend of theirs attends the church. They called uh, Mario, our youth pastor, and they said, uh, I asked the parents if it was okay for you to come pray for this baby. Mm -hmm. she, she's in ICU. Well, can you come? It was Sunday night after youth, after uh -huh. the youth meeting. So Mario and another uh, one of the youth went over there and laid hands on the baby. And the Lord miraculously mm -hmm. healed that baby the next day. Mm -hmm. The pool of blood was gone. Wow. The baby also had some fractures. They couldn't even tell that there was anything that had been broken or fractured. The baby couldn't gain weight. 
The baby gained, I don't I forget how many pounds in just a matter of, matter of days. And so that was really remarkable. It was just like something out of the book of Acts. Yeah. Yeah. One thing Those I, just, I like to admonish ministers, they often say, I don't want to talk about all the healings and stuff. I understand that, but we don't want to brag on ourselves. We're not bragging on ourselves. No. The revival in Acts chapter 19 uh, that happened at Ephesus, that God did, said God did special <clears throat> miracles by the hands of Paul. And from their, from their bodies were taken handkerchiefs and aprons, but it didn't tell any of the healings. Mm. It didn't tell any of them. It just said this happened. But one specific one was the seven sons of Sceva. And it went into such detail. Yeah. Told who their parent, who his dad was, you know, their yeah. sons of Sceva. It started talking about where they came from, how they, were, they operated under demonic things. And when Paul heard about that. He wasn't even there. I mean, these guys tried to cast out a devil, in the, in, <laughs> you know, in the name of Jesus that that Paul guy preaches. And that's when the demon answered, I don't, I know Paul and I know Jesus, but I don't know you. And, uh, but anyway, they ran out of the house. The Bible says they were naked. By the time they got the front door, one man stripped the clothes off of seven of those guys. They ran out the door naked. And then it said it was known throughout all of Ephesus. So the, the leader or the reporter from the Gazette must have been out there and took pictures <laughs> of these seven naked guys running out of there. That caused such a change in the entire city that the next day they came and they started burning their witchcraft. Yes, the that's right. That's and right. then churches formed out of that. There are key ones that are so important. I often tell ministers, look for the key ones that yeah. you saw. Not, I mean, we don't, sure, if we wanted, all we want to do is talk about the miracles. Yeah, we could yeah, be yeah. bragging on, we've got it better than you guys. But when there's a key one that changed it, and uh, that's what happened. Yeah. I want to talk for just a moment about the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Oftentimes we try to reduce this. Why, why they like to hear about what uh -huh. happened with you, they try to go over here and reproduce it. Uh -huh. And it's not reproducible like you did it. Every revival is unique. Not mm -hmm. only the ones that happen throughout history, when revivals break out across the country, it's not the same of Washington State as it is down here in Florida or right. Texas or whatever. Something is That's unique about it. But the one common denominator is they come back to the importance of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Revival comes back to the Holy Spirit. And uh, so you want to talk about that, the yeah, conviction yeah. ministry? And yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me lead, up, lead into that quickly by saying we were... New Life Church was, a, I mean, we were a good church, but we were, we were, we could have probably been, def, have been defined more as like a seeker sensitive church, mm -hmm. an attractional church model. And well, I never um, thought that. I, no, honestly, I <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 but, but I, yes. And I don't think it was like super that way, but it was enough that I was, I got convicted mm -hmm. and, and I preached the word and I taught the word and, and, um, but there was something that was missing. And, and I think that, um, after reading the, uh, Jesus message to the seven churches, um, the message of the gospel was, was so simple. Repent for the mm -hmm. kingdom of God is at hand. And you just see that all throughout the scriptures, that message, you know, mm -hmm. there's different aspects or facets to that diamond, but it's still the same. And, and so, um, so, the very first thing, as I said at the other broadcast, that the Lord dealt with me about was give an invitation for repentance. Mm -hmm. And that was outside of my comfort zone to be that direct with it. Mm -hmm. But once I did, it was like the Holy Spirit had the room and the space to just move on people's hearts through mm -hmm. deep, deep conv conviction. People were repenting for sins that nobody knew about. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, oh man, it was, it, you can't manufacture right. that in right. the natural. That's a work of the Spirit. And so, and the other thing too, along with that was just the power of the Holy Spirit and the need for that. And I want, I believe the Lord wants to bring back to his church, capital C, the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Paul told the Corinth church, I didn't trust in the excellency of speech, mm -hmm. but I came to you with a demonstration of the power of, of, mm -hmm. of the power of God. Mm -hmm. So that your trust would not rest in men or wisdom, man's right. wisdom but your faith and trust would rest in the power of God. And I really feel like the Lord's calling us back to that as a church. Uh, he certainly was us. And so, yeah, that message has been predominant. And even with our teenagers in the schools, in the college campuses, man, they these guys that are preaching, and I got a bunch of young preachers, men and women that are out there preaching, and they are unapologetically preaching, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And it's amazing how the Holy Spirit moves on someone's heart and yeah. draws them. Yeah. Well, I think of what Paul said that the, you know, you mentioned it's not in man's wisdom. 
but men always try to complicate things. And even you know, denominations try to complicate things. I know you gave your life to Jesus, but we want to see that change in your life. Well, if they truly gave their life to Jesus and they're following after it will change. And it'll be seen things you'll change, but you didn't try to change. When you try to change to prove to people that you've been saved, you know, then you put works back in the whole right, thing. Right, right, right. Jesus said, uh, I'm mean, probably not Jesus. The Old Testament says that uh, the, the plan of salvation is so simple, a fool couldn't err in it. Mm-hmm. And people say, why do you put it on such a low level so we can all get saved? <laughs> so, you know? and, but it yeah. really irritates the educated. It irritates it the does. wealthy. It irritates the theologians. You know, yeah. try to, If they can't complicate salvation, they try to complicate the Christian life. No, you're saved now. Well, here's all the rules you yes, have to keep. You know, yes. This is what's going to prove this and prove that. Yeah. I love the fact that the call of God is just as simple as getting saved. Yeah. And revival seems to bring that out when suddenly people go, well, now I know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. How, what a revelation. Well, is. you know, the Lord in 2018, after everything started, the Lord gave me a, a picture. I was in prayer. He gave me a picture of John the Baptist from the verse, you know, mm-hmm. that he, the description of John, camel's hair, leather mm-hmm. belt, eating locusts and honey. And, mm-hmm. and I felt like the Lord spoke a to hippie. me. Yeah. A hippie. I felt like the Lord spoke to me and he said, that's where I need my church to get back to. Yeah that we as a church, including New Life, have picked up so many accoutrements that we think are necessary for us to be effective. And it's just, it, it's, it doesn't have to be that complicated. That he, he need, just like John was the forerunner of Jesus, the church, we're the John the Baptist or the forerunner of the second coming. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I really believe it's just that simple. If we can get back to the simple message of the gospel, God can add himself to that. He will add him. We've mm-hmm. seen him add himself to that. And we've seen that uh, what he's been able to do uh, which is far more than what we could manufacture mm-hmm. in our own attempts, you know, in our own programs and our own plans. And so it's just really been, uh, it's been refreshing. It's been challenging. It's, it's, uh, it's kept us on our knees. Um, but, but we discovered that the space that you give the Lord Whatever space a church or an individual will give the Lord in their lives or in their church or in their services, whatever space you'll give the Holy Spirit, that's the space he'll fill. He'll mm-hmm. always fill it, mm-hmm. but that's the only space he can fill. Yeah. And so that's kind of what keeps us going. Yeah. 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 Well, what I think is coming out in this first half of this broadcast is this. This isn't complicated. This is not rocket science. It's not something you have to sit down and figure out how you're going to do it. In fact, just catch the first flow of the Holy Spirit and he'll add part two, part three, part four. And the simplicity of it is God gave us the call to go into all the world and preach the gospel. When we come back, I'm going to talk about uh, why we don't necessarily have to bring them to church to get saved. Have the church go out and get them. And this is what revival is, what mm-hmm. happening on college campuses. College campuses is a place, the first thing you think of, let's get people saved there. It's where they go to get an education. Education. When we come back right after halftime, we'll continue this. At the dawn of the church age, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit and power to his followers. From Pentecost, they were led by his Spirit to blaze a trail through the hazardous maze of pagan cultures and religious legalism. Like wildfire, the gospel spread through the known world, bringing salvation to a whole generation and triumph and trial to the church. In a New Testament commentary on Acts, Bob Yannian explores the exploits of those sent to uproot the binding vines of religion and philosophy and to sow the kingdom of God. Through evaluations of early congregations and detailed descriptions of their cities, Pastor Bob walks us through the exciting, perilous adventure of the early church. Order a New Testament commentary on Acts at bobyandian.com. Theology Simplified is a practical guide to foundational biblical truth. Basic doctrines are not difficult, but easy to understand. They often become disguised as complicated or deep-sounding words, but the definitions are simple. Pastor Bob makes complex theological concepts clear and practical. Eight crucial doctrines of the Christian faith are demystified. Redemption, justification, sanctification, reconciliation, predestination, election, propitiation, and glorification. These eight precepts, essential for all believers to understand, come to light as you read and arrive at a deeper understanding of the finished work of Jesus Christ. To order Theology Simplified, visit our website at bobyandian.com. 
Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. Well, we're back with Pastor Mike Faylauer. Mike has written a couple of books. We'll talk about that later in this uh, broadcast, but what he's talking about here, you might be thinking, I can't take notes that fast or comprehend it all. You'll be able to buy it in book form. And uh, today, I just wanna mention this. You know, he, he was talking about John the Baptist uh, before uh, we went into the break, and it suddenly struck me. John the Baptist went out where the people were, not asked the people to come to the church where they were. Nothing wrong with getting people saved. Acts 14 tells us we can get them saved in church. That's the purpose of the gifts of the Spirit, mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit can speak to people and reveal the secrets of their heart. They'll give their life to Jesus. But I would have to say this, the other 95, 96% of those who get saved were designed out there. And uh, Jesus didn't say go into all the churches and preach the gospel. He said go into all the world and preach the gospel, but keep it simple. They don't need all your high education, your deep revelations. That's for later on as they grow in the things mm -hmm. of God. All that John the Baptist taught was give your life to Jesus Christ. Here's the one that's coming. There he is, the Lamb of God, and then had water baptism. And from there, they could get involved then mm -hmm. and know how to get involved in the church. I think of the man that was healed at the gate, beautiful. I mean, they didn't say, come on, come on into the building. We'll get you saved there. They just said, what we have, we give to you. In the name mm. of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise right. up and walk. He went walking, leaping and praising God, but the sentence doesn't end there. He then followed them into the temple. We need to be out there leading people to Jesus Christ and say, come on, I'll pick you up Sunday and take you to church. Yes. Well, there's a whole lot of weirdos just like us <laughs> that come to praise and worship the Lord. So in the growth of your meetings, you want to talk about what's kind of evolved spiritually since that time and, and how one thing has led to another. You're unique. So don't anybody sit there and say, I'm going to write this down. We're going to do it exactly the same way. Give room for the Holy Spirit to use you, the area you live in, the temperament of the people that you're around, the, the part of the country you're from. But just tell us what's happened in your case. Yeah, well, we did, you know, when everything started in 2018, we didn't really have a, uh, a plan. There wasn't a playbook. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, now we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this, and then it'll evolve to this. Uh, we didn't whiteboard anything, like pull out a whiteboard and sure. let's do it like this. We, we really were just following the leading of the Holy Spirit. Like, Lord, what, what do you want next? What do you want next? And, and um, just trying to allow the Spirit of the Lord to kind of orchestrate uh, what he wanted done in, in, within the church and the lives of the people within our community. And so uh, there was obviously at the very beginning of everything, so much was happening and it still does happen within our services whether it's Sunday or our, what we call heaven come services mm -hmm. that we do once a month. Um, there was so much that was happening there, but then we began to see the Lord uh, as the Holy Spirit began to fall. And as young people and, old, and older folks began to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there was a boldness that they all mm -hmm. experienced. And, and then there was a freedom that we felt like we needed to make sure that they knew they had. Mm -hmm. So it, it's one thing to tell them that they can't, that's great, but that's it, but it's also something different to say you can. Mm -hmm. And we started telling them, hey, look, you can create your own pulpit. You can, I mean, everywhere you're at is an opportunity for God's voice to be heard and his presence to be experienced. And so it was amazing. They just really, we didn't have to tell them twice. And so all of a sudden, some of the life groups that our young adults had, um, they, not all of them, but uh, some of those life groups kind of turned into preaching points or revival points where they'd be in a, in a, uh, a student uh, apartment housing for the college campus outdoors, you know, in the area or in the grass. Mm -hmm. And one of our young adults and some of his leaders preaching to 40 or 50 uh, college students and super simple, mm -hmm. you know, here's who Jesus is. Here's what he came to do. Here's what he accomplished. Yeah. You can accept him. Here's what, but it's through this avenue of repentance and all, you know, here's the love of God and here's what that looks like. And then giving students an opportunity to receive the Lord. And so just as so many of those began to happen 
uh, outside of the walls of the church. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as we mentioned in the previous broadcast, we started seeing that also start happening in the in the schools mm -hmm. and where you have high school students and they're literally the ones bringing the lesson, so to speak, or preaching, sharing a testimony, preaching mm -hmm. from the scriptures, giving an invitation, asking, telling students God loves them. You can repent and receive eternal life. And here's how you do that. So that's kind of um, that's taken everything to a whole nother level because now it's wasn't just concentrated within the, the address of the church. Uh -huh. Now it was happening throughout the community. Yeah. Um, I think of the, we talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. Honestly, I think most Christians don't even understand this. The main purpose of the gifts of the Spirit is to win souls. And we, we hog them all for services. You know, <laughs> come here and we'll lay hands on you. Come here, you can see miracles. When the miracles should be happening out on the streets, yeah. the man that was healed at the gate, beautiful, a yeah. miracle happened. They didn't say, well, you have to get saved first, come to the church, and then yeah. you can get this. Yeah. That that's what it's for. The gospel includes the gifts of the Spirit. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Cast out devils. These are all tools to win people to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think revival like this, going to a college campus, lets the students uh, from your church speak to the students that are there. Let the young people from your church speak to the young people that are there mm -hmm. and show them by the simple laying on of hands. And so has that type of thing increased where the where the where actually the ones going out there to minister are getting more bold in their own ministry? Oh, yes, absolutely, 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%, and I love that. There are times where I'll show up to some of the things that they're doing. I'm talking specifically about the college students now and the young adults, and I'm there, and they love the fact that I'm there because I'm kind of like dad, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, spiritually. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't say a word. I don't do anything. I don't direct anything. I'm just there in, kind of in the background, just kind of mm -hmm. praying. And what I love is they're actually out there just doing what God's called them to do, flowing in the, in the presence of the Lord and the anointing of God, and they're not looking over their shoulder wondering, well, what does Pastor Mike think? Does he like this? Am I mm -hmm. doing it right? That it's like they love me being there, but they act like I'm not there. Uh -huh. And I just love that because they're so, the, the Lord is is moving through them. And they're so, they have such a sense of freedom, Bob, right. and liberty mm -hmm. uh, to do that. And and uh, we're seeing uh, we're seeing young men and women, man, they, they can preach. Yeah. And I'm seeing, they're, they're preaching stronger than they've ever preached before. Yeah. And it's anointed. And I'm like, okay, that this, these guys are going to, <laughs> yeah, these guys are powerful. It seems that I, I grew up in church, and there was some kind of formula. You want to become a missionary, join this missions organization. We'll show you how to do it. When really missionary work is simply evangelism, like going on the streets of where? Where does your where does your evangelistic ministry start, and where does your missionary place? If you're going to go call to Africa, well, God can't send you to Africa if you're not faithful in mm -hmm. in you know in Galena, Kansas, or wherever you are. You know, some little town where you are. To be faithful, this is where it starts right here. Yeah. And to go out there expecting God's power to show up and expecting people to get saved. You know, when Jesus was ministering and, and signs and wonders were being done, it just said that after he performed all these miracles, many believed on him. You know what mm -hmm. that meant? Miracles for, for sinners. Yeah. We often right. say it's all for Christians. No, it's part of evangelism. Yeah. And when they got healed, it says many. Didn't say all, which means right. even some after being healed will turn around, yeah, I don't want this thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. And go away. But think of it, they had the they're gonna have to stand before God and he's gonna say, I worked a miracle in front of your eyes. Yeah. You still turned yeah. away from me. Yeah. But with this happening, what I'm simply saying, folks, is revival is a time that when you send people out to get involved in it, individual ministries start to spring up everywhere. In the midst of all that, the Holy Spirit shows people what they're supposed to be doing. And uh, like I said, from the revival of the Jesus days and, and the revivals we've come through, the charismatic movement and others, you get most of these ministers say that that was during that revival time that Lord spoke to me and showed me what to do. This is happening all across uh -huh. the United States. It's in pockets right now, but each pocket begins to grow. God is not one that just specifically I think I'll choose this place. He looks for open hearts. That's right. And open hearts is the key to the whole thing. It's the key to being a missionary. Uh, there's a girl in our Bible school when I was in Bible school back in 1969. And she just came to school one day and she was called the mission field. She said, anybody ever heard of Mindanao? 
And everybody said, it's in the Philippines. She said, oh, really? So she started looking up. She said, I had a dream last night of Mindanao. I'm supposed to go there. Well, in a matter of a couple of weeks, people were contributing money to her. The church did things like that. And she had enough money that it's at, at the break, the semester break, she went over there, came back and told stories that were unbelievable. Somebody over there asked God to send somebody to their tribe. And she went over there and yes, led the whole yes. tribe to the Lord Jesus Christ, even including the for the two weeks she was there, including the witch doctor. Wow. And so she came back and gave this. And as soon as school was over, she went right back there and based her ministry out of that yeah, place. Yeah. But it came during a time of revival. That was the charismatic movement going on. And even in our Bible school, we had a revival going on. Understand this, times of revival are times of refreshing. But the point of this revival doesn't last forever. But the results of it yes. are that people become disciples to go out and do the same thing yes. again. You don't need a gigantic revival. Start your own. Yeah. By just going out and being obedient right. to God. Yeah. So with those types of things, I think about, you know, people getting involved in the gifts of the Spirit. They begin to understand, I don't have to be Pastor Mike to lay hands on a That's sick right. person and see them healed. I can do it right here. Well, the strength of the Jesus movement, the reason why the Jesus movement, many historians believe it was probably one of the greatest movements uh, other it says than, so on the screen. Yeah, so. that's right. Other than <laughs> it has the, to be right. Other than the Second Great Awakening, of yeah. course. But apart from the Second Great Awakening, I think the reason why it was so far-reaching and so powerful is because it wasn't wasn't centralized around a specific preacher. Mm -hmm. It was hippies getting saved, preaching to each other, baptizing them, laying hands on them. It was it was the the hippies ministering to the hippies, and of course, eventually you had men like Chuck Smith and mm -hmm. others that kind of. Uh, provided some oversight and yeah. some and, and and pastoral oversight and all of that, but what the reason why it was so powerful and it, it reached so far is because it wasn't centralized to one person mm -hmm. and it wasn't centralized to one location. Mm -hmm. Now there are there are revivals that you and I know about that it has been that way and those are wonderful. Those are great. What's happening at New Life? What we've seen the last five years and another reason why it's gone on so long. Is because it's not centralized around me, and it's not just centralized around one location mm -hmm. or a specific service. It's gone, it, and it's the body. It's people understanding that I can preach the gospel, I can lay hands on the sick, I can baptize, I can. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, how do you? How does the enemy stop that? He can yeah. get one guy and take him out and stop a revival, mm -hmm. but it's tough when there's hundreds of them. Yeah. Before we go, tell us about your books again. Okay, real quick. Uh, Four Wednesdays in July, this is really a, a, a description. We've got photos, pictures, but it's a description of what happened when the outpouring took place in 2018. And then Ears to Hear is just a, an expansion of a teaching on Jesus' message to the seven churches. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a current example stuff that we're dealing with today. Uh, so this book will really help someone be able to interpret what's going on today through a biblical worldview. Yeah. At the bottom of your screen is, a, is a, his address where you can call, uh, call or write and get the books. And the other part that I want to tell you is, again, these are things that happen in this church but can give you ideas. We can learn from each other. We just don't have to try to be each other. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. For coming, Mike. Yeah. Great to see you again. We'll see you for the next broadcast. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. Join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.